to avoid doing that. I promise I won't chew with my mouth open. Okay, uh, here we go. So review skills. Review uh, skills. And it's February 10th, 2021. Okay. First, we're going to talk about lines and slopes. Okay. So you have three main slopes. Okay, so I'm going to have four columns here. So I'm going to try to break them down already so that, so what I do is I'll split this in half and I split the halves and halves again. Something like that. So it's going to be something like this. Okay, so you have four types of slope. And uh, I don't know if you recall the letter M was used for slopes, which doesn't make sense, right? Like why would they use M? Should they be use, using S or something? I don't know. That's just how they, we go with the flow, okay? So the first type of slope is called undefined. And it will be a vertical line. Okay. And essentially, I don't know if you remember, let's go back up here. Do you remember that slope is rise? Right? Rise over run, do you remember that? Vaguely, it should ring a bell. Okay, rise over run. And for a vertical line, you do have a rise, so it could be a number, but there is no run, okay? So this would be your rise, and this would be your run, okay? And, and the answer to that is undefined, it's not zero, okay? So don't tell me that a slope of a vertical line is zero, this actually is undefined. Like if you use your calculator, anybody ever tried to divide something by zero? If you do, let me know, okay? But you get a math error, it's undefined. So don't tell me that the slope of a vertical line is zero, it's undefined, here it is, right? So this is the first type, which is undefined. So we'll make a little graph here. Okay, so if this is your y-axis and this is your x-axis, Okay, and I'm going to use a different color for my actual line. So, okay. so let's say you have a line going through uh, negative two here. And we will have to extend this a little bit, right? The equation of this line would be, anybody remember, x is equal to negative 2, right? So, everything is connected here, right? If you see a vertical line, you know that the slope is undefined. Why? Because it does have a rise, it rises, but it never runs. So that would be number divided by zero, and can't do it, so it's undefined, right? And the equation that would represent this line is always x is equal to a number. Always, right? In general, x is equal to a number, okay? And so you have that, it's a vertical line. Probably use about the same for the second column. This would be a positive slope. Okay. 
this would be a diagonal line. Okay. It's so a positive slope. I'm going to underline that. And it is a, has a diagonal line. And so if we came up with our for your notes, I don't really care if you use a ruler, but when I ask, ask you to graph, I I want you to use a ruler, okay? Like on a on a quiz, AC, whatever. So this is X and this is Y. And so the line would be rising towards the right. This is just one example of such line. Okay. And it goes from quadrant three, right, to quadrant one. That's just an aside. You should know, right? Quadrant one, two, three, four. A positive a line with a positive slope will always one of the ends will be in quadrant three and the other end will be in quadrant one no matter where it is like you can raise it higher up ultimately it would end up in quadrant three and quadrant one okay we would say that this one rises from left to right In general, the equation would be y is equal to mx plus b. Do you recall that? This would be the slope intercept form. It's not the general form, but in general for us, this is what it's going to look like. Then you have a negative slope. It's also a diagonal line. It's your x axis, y axis. In this case, it'd be going down like this. And one end will be in quadrant two. The other end always ends up in quadrant four. Roman numerals are not required, but it is what it is. Uh, drops from left to right. In general, y is equal to mx plus b. So they, the general, in general, they will look the same. If it's a diagonal, it could be going up from left to right or down from left to right. And the last one is the zero slope. zero slope. This is a horizontal line. And this one would be the opposite of the first, right? This one is the exact opposite where you have no rise whatsoever, but you do have a run. It depends on the situation, right? Regardless of what number ends up being here, this is always equal to zero okay this is your rise and this is your run there 
and we're gonna just place it somewhere over here. This would be a positive three over two, right? Or one and a half. So the equation here would be y is equal to 3 over 2 positive. In general, y is equal to a number. Okay? That summarizes slopes. I'll wait a little bit for you to, let me focus one more time. Back row, how is this? Are you able to see everything? Yeah. What about way over there? Are you able to see? Yeah. This is just a little aside, a complete aside to help you out. You can take it if you want, you can leave it. Mr. Slope, okay, so a positive line always goes up like this, a negative always goes down like this. A vertical line has an undefined slope right and a horizontal as a zero slope there you go see he says that art and math don't meet okay it looks like a clown almost anyways um we'll continue with our notes here the equation of a diagonal line y equals mx plus b comma where m is the slope And B is the Y intercept. When graphing, Diagonal lines start with the y intercept, comma, then use the slope rise over run to find additional points. Connect the points. and add 
arrowheads. to make the lines. Always write the equation. This is big for grade 12 as well. Next to the line. And this is what we call part of labeling, right? So I'm going to start a new page because I don't I won't have enough room where with that little piece that is left there. You think they'll be good at home? You think they'll have this written down for now by now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I have a back side to this. I'll use the back save paper. Okay, so here. Uh, examples. Okay, right, we'll we'll graph the following. A. Okay, y is equal to 2x minus 3. And then what you will do there is kind of recognize this, uh, this shape, right? It's like, oh, it's y is equal to mx plus b, right? Even though it's a minus 3 there. So you should be thinking of, yeah, this, this equation that I was given definitely looks like this, okay? And the two um, is our slope, right? So it'd be two. And I'll make a note, right? It's a positive slope. It will be going up. Positive slope, I expect the line to go up. And B, right, B is actually negative 3 in this case. So that means that my y-intercept is a point where x is equal to 0. Remember, right, like when you're hitting the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So immediately when you think of this, you should be thinking of a point like this. And we're going to start here. Okay, we start there. So let's make our graph. So you have to, one thing that I'm gonna teach you is to be comfortable graphing lines, a lot of them, okay? And, and almost throughout the course, graphing is huge, not just on the calculator, but also on paper. So you kind of have to see what scale do I need? What scale do I need to make this fit? So. I'm actually looking at very small numbers, right? It's like negative three and it's going up positive like this. So a grid of five by five or something like that will suffice, right? So I'm going to start with my Y axis using a ruler and I'm going to use my X axis, going to draw that. Okay, and they, they should get arrowheads like this x and y and so a scale goes like this you choose as long as you're consistent you can go up by two you can go up by one you can go up by five but you can't mix it up you can say oh yeah this first line is three and then i'm going to go up by five now so three eight it doesn't make sense because you just told me that the first a gap here is three right 
So you can't do that. You can have different scales on the x-axis compared to the y-axis. That is, that is acceptable, but it has to be consistent, okay? So I think if I use a scale of one, I'm doing pretty good. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a mark here and another mark here, right? I'm just gonna use the lines that are already there. If you don't have lines, just make sure they're equally spaced out. So this would be minus one, minus two, minus three, right? And then we go up and same thing, one, two. And I'm gonna do this, try to use the same scaling here. So one, two, three, and so oh, that actually looks a little narrow. So I'm just gonna adjust a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not gonna split hair here over like, I'm not gonna measure these distances, but they should look fairly um, equally spaced apart. And another trick is if you wanna just label every other one, that is also quite all right to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm going, I'm using a scale of one throughout this thing. So I'm gonna go minus two here, that does it. So you've now laid out your grid, you're ready to graph, okay? You're gonna start with your y-intercept. So you make a big dot there. Okay. Nice and big there. And now you're gonna use your slope. Your slope is, I'm just gonna remind you, a slope of two is actually a slope of two over one where your rise is two and your run is one. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna rise two, so one, two, and run one. I'm gonna put a dot down. At this point, you're technically ready to graph. All you need is two points and you have a line. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop there, connect the two, some teachers want another one, so I'll show you what you would do there. So you just keep going. One, two, over one. If the if the dots do not line up, you made a mistake, okay? So there you go, you graph it like that. If you go past it, don't just stop, because you're just finding points that are on the line, but there's actually an infinite number of points on that line. Put arrowheads and make sure you write the equation next to it. And now that's considered 100%. Uh, you would score 100% on that graph right there. Let's try another one. B is, uh, y is equal to negative one half x minus one. So here, right, my slope is negative one half. It's a negative slope, right? Goes down. And uh, B is equal to negative one. And that, uh, that is a point zero negative one, like that. Again, small numbers. I'm just gonna stick with a grid that is approximately five by five doesn't have to be exact, right? So this is my Y. Probably smart to put the X axis right on one of the lines, okay? Zero negative one is here. And we're gonna use a slope of negative one over two. So first of all, I'm just gonna label I'm just gonna go negative two here. I'm gonna go positive two up here. I'm gonna go two here. Go to the left and two there. And if you wanna keep marking, sure, by any, don't, don't think you have to stop, but uh, don't go uh, too crazy, right? Like it's just, Keep it small, we're not going too far from the from where we start. So zero negative one was given to me by the y-intercept. Now I'm gonna use a slope of 
some students are confused here. It's like, well, is it is the negative? Is it going to go to the two or is it going to go to the one? Or is it going to go? I always make the negative float up and affect the top number so that the bottom number is always positive. So what that tells me is because the negative applies to the one, that means that I'm dropping one, right? So I'm going to go down one and run two. Okay, keep going one more time, down one, over two, like that. So I'm going to go drop one, over two, drop one, over two, right? So it's a negative one, a negative one, dropping, and then there's a positive two, positive two. So if you always bring the negative up, then you're always running to the right, that's for sure. And then the, the sign on top will either be positive or negative. If it's positive, you're always going up and right, up and right. If it's negative, you're always going down and right, down and right, okay? What you should notice is that your slope results in a negative, it's a negative slope, so your line is going down from left to right and then you put down your equation like that and that's a fully marked perfectly acceptable graph okay i will i will actually give another example on this side here I have the room. I'm actually going to go up here as well. If you don't have the room, just continue, keep going below it, okay? C y is equal to. Yeah, I'll do that. Y is equal to three. And I'm gonna kind of line it up here. D, X is equal to negative three. So you should recognize that y is equal to 3, it's a special case, right? What kind of slope would this be? Well, th we know that y is equal to a number is a horizontal line, right? Zero slope. And it goes through uh, zero, 3, okay? And that three comes from the equation itself. So I'm just gonna quickly make my grid. X and Y. Y is equal to three would be somewhere up here. So I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna show you how to scale differently. If this is two and this is four, right? The, now you've used a scale of two here and I'm just gonna show you here. I've used a scale of one along the x-axis. Okay, and that's fine. So y is equal to three, Three would be between two and four, so it's right here. Okay. So now my line goes there, and it's just going to be a horizontal line like this. Y is equal to three. And the next one is a vertical line. 
undefined slope. And again, it's a bit of an art to be able to graph properly. And you'll see, I'll, I'll try to teach you all the tricks of the trade. X is equal to negative 3, right? This line goes through negative 3, 0. Okay, it goes through an x value of negative 3. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and I'm just going to tell my viewers, right, that this is negative 2. So I'm going with a scale of 1. And what I've done here is I just I shrunk the spacing a little bit compared to the previous graphs. But as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter, right, as long as you're consistent. So 1. 2, that's 2, like that. And we're just going to focus on, we don't really need to focus on this as much. So I'm just going to go, this is 2, this is negative 2. But this is a line, x is equal to negative 3, which goes right through here. And feel free to extend. So that's your line there. Just making sure everybody at home can catch up. We're good here, all caught up, okay. We're gonna try, this is uh, E, right? Is this E? Yeah. D, E, okay. How about Y is equal to X? Would you be able to graph that one? That's, one, that's a classic line in math, right? Y is equal to X. Y is exactly equal to X. You should know that, right? Uh, M is equal to 1, positive, right? It's just, it's just not there, but really there's a coefficient of 1 there. So M is equal to 1. B is equal to there's technically a plus zero there, but it's not there, right? So B is equal to zero. So my starting point is the origin, okay? I start at the origin with this one. I'm gonna try to just graph it on this side here. So we start at the origin, and then I'm just going to use a scale of 1 here. So I'm going to go 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2. You might have to in increase this down the road. You might have to go 5, 10, 15. It depends on your situation, okay? If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit, right? So my slope of 1 means what? A slope of 1 is really 1 over 1, right? It's the same thing. So you can just, from the origin, you go 1, 1, dot, right? 1, 1, dot. So it's a line, and we knew it was positive. 
a positive slope, so we expected it to rise from left to right. So there's the y equals x line. I forgot my x and y labeled on the axes. The x and y will change to actual things, right? This will be height, uh, time, and height. If it's not stated, then it's x and y, okay? Okay, so this is enough for graphing. Now we're going to actually go a little further back and rewrite first, okay? For the following, oh, I won't do the, I will do FF for the following. That just means following. If I do that in, uh, moving forward, you know that. For the following questions. I rewrite equations to y equals mx plus b. Slope intercept. Does that ring a bell? Slope intercept? Good thing is that you're not going to have to worry about rewriting into anything else but Slope intercept. Okay. I know that in IPR, right, you did slope intercept, point slope, general, standard. It's like, oh my goodness, right? Now you're only going to have to worry about this one. Uh, and then number two is graph the line of the equation. Okay, so let's give this a try. So let's say you had 3x plus 2y is equal to 6. And we have to rewrite it, right? So I rewrite. Basically, you have to isolate isolate y in this case. So if you take this, what I do is uh, whatever goes over the equal sign changes its sign. Does that ring a bell? You flip the sign. You may or may not have heard of it, but really the the 3x, you want to bring it over because our goal is to isolate y. So 2y is going to be equal to negative 3x. And just for this, I'm going to use a different color, right? Negative 3x. And the 6 is already there. And convention has it that we'll put the x term first and then the 6, even though really it doesn't matter. If you run 6 minus 3x, it's still accurate. And then... At this point, we want to divide both sides by the coefficient, the number that's in front of y, like that. And so you end up, this ends up canceling or reducing to 1. That's exactly what you want. And this, pay attention to this part. This is the one that happens a common error is this okay it's like oh yeah this is negative 3 over 2x right because the 2 splits the 3 and then a lot of students will just go plus 6 okay done right it's like no nope, this is wrong because the 2 affects the 3 and it affects the 6 right so you have to be very careful there so 6 divided by 2 is 3 okay so watch out for that common error. The three affects both numbers there, and then because it happens quite often. Okay. So um, now you can graph it. So we'll do that right underneath. I kind of want to do another example right next to it. So kind of 
try to keep it on this half of the page, okay? So for double I, we will graph. My slope is negative three over two. My y-intercept is three, which is really the point zero three. I need you to be comfortable with that, right? It's zero three. And so now let's graph it. So we're starting at three and then we're gonna go dropping three over two, drop three over two, right? So the line is kind of gonna go down like this. You kind of have to envision it already. So, let's go ahead and graph this. x-axis, y-axis. Get that out of the way, right? And I have a feeling that I should go by twos here. Right? So two, four, six, eight, right? And that takes care of the scaling there. And it's okay to not have the same amount on either side as long as you're consistent, right? So this one only goes to negative four there but I'm trying to keep the gaps about the same. And I'm gonna start at three and then drop, right? So I think if I use a scale of one here, I'll be fine. So that's two, and this is negative two there. So you're setting up the stage, right? If you wanna keep marking, sure, right? It's up to you. I just need some indication that I know what you're doing, right? Like what scale am I using here? So you start at zero three, which is here. And then it's saying that you're gonna drop three and run two to the right. Remember, I always put the negative up. So you're gonna go one, two, three. And watch this, you have to be careful. Two would get you to here, right? So three down, two over. You can keep going. One, two, three over two would get you to four. And that's about as many points as I would suggest. Don't do more than that. And then you just connect it. And go past a little bit on either side. Like don't just stop at the, at the points, right? And this is y is equal to negative three over two x plus three. And there's your graph. And because these are your nodes, right? I'm gonna just indicate, right? How did I get from here to here? I went down three, right? You went down three this way. And use a blue, right, to go. Come on, oh, there you go. And two over, right? And that continues. Go down three. and over two. And that's what happened there. That's how we get to our next point on the line. So I'm gonna to try to split this. Like that. How are we doing? You okay? Yeah? Okay, so B up here, uh, 4x minus 2y is equal to 18. And so use that 
space to do this. I'm going to ask you to do this. If you're uncomfortable and you, you don't want to mess up your notes, because, you know, heaven forbid you, you scratch your notes, right, or whatever, um, then do it on, on a different piece of uh, paper because I will go over it. Uh, but I want you to try this right now. And the next one I want you to try is this one. 6x minus 5y minus 25. So it looks a little different, but you should know what to do there. So for both B and C, uh, and I will come up with one more yet, I want you to graph those. Yes. So whatever you don't get done today, I'll put one on there that's going to challenge your scaling. Last one, I promise. And if you struggle a little bit, that's fine. So just to reiterate, making sure you're doing I and double I for all of these, right? So you're doing, you're rewriting if possible and you're draw, graphing them as well. And just so you know, there will be special cases on there, right? There will be a vertical, there will be horizontal. So just got to be ready for that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop the recording there.